Hello, if you're like most students, you probably have some anxiety about Calculus 1 and think it's a difficult or hard topics to understand. And what I'm going to tell you today and show you here in a few minutes is that everything in Calculus 1 makes total sense and is actually very, very simple to understand if you just take everything in step-by-step -step increments. So watch this clip here for a few minutes here and you'll be wondering why you thought it was so difficult to begin with. Now before we actually tackle any calculus, it's really important to review some things that you already know because calculus is a natural extension of algebra. So what we're going to do is review some quick things, and you should already know these things, but I'm not going to assume that you know anything at all. So here's a graph. We can call this x if you like. We can call it y up here. And what we're going to do is draw a quick line on this graph. So let me just draw a shallow line like this. Everybody should have seen a graph of a line somewhere along in Algebra 1. Now this is a relatively shallow line. It, we, we say that it's not very steep at all, right? So we begin in algebra to talk about the slope of a line. And you should have learned that a long time ago. And the slope of a line, the slope, is kind of like the slope of a mountain. I mean, a very steep mountain, would we would say, would have a, a high slope. A very shallow hill or some gentle gradual slope, we would say it would have a low slope. So this guy is on the low side, so we're going to say it has a low slope. And the way we calculate slope is the rise of our of our line divided by what we call the run. And what we mean by that is we look at how high it goes up compared to how high it goes over. So what you do when you calculate the slope of a line is you see you look at some coordinates on the line like this point here and this point here and we look at the XY coordinates here and we calculate how far does it go up and we find that number and then we divide it by how far it goes over and we get a number that we call the slope. Now let's compare that to a slightly different line. So I'll draw another set of XY directly underneath here, right? And here we'll draw a different line. We'll draw a very steep line, right? Something that's very steep, like a steep mountain. And so what we learn here, again, is we can calculate the slope, which typically uh, we call it, you know, m for slope. We talked about that a lot in algebra. And so in this case, we do the same thing. We see how high it goes up compared to how high it goes over. Now you can see in these two cases that this guy goes up a whole lot uh, and then goes over just a little bit. This guy doesn't go up so much and it goes over here just a little bit. And so when you calculate the slope in both cases, what you'll find out is that this has a low slope, which means a small number for the slope, and this has a higher slope. This is very essential to calculus. You'll see why in just a second. So the way you would do that is you calculate the rise. You calculate if you have a point here in the line and a point here in the line. You calculate with the coordinates here how high does it go compared to how far over does it go. And when you do this calculation, since it's rise divided by run, this guy rises a lot. So its slope is going to be higher. This guy rises just a little bit. So its slope is going to be smaller. All right, now let's move away from the algebra topics a little bit and start to tie in a little bit of the calculus. So you see, slope is very nice concept to understand in algebra because we're always talking about lines. So it's very easy to calculate rise divided by run. But what happens when you get to more complicated uh, curves? For instance, what if you have something that might look like you know this. Maybe it's not a line. Maybe it curves like this. In fact, this is very common. You can go out in nature and do experiments and all kinds of things where you don't have straight lines. You have these curved things going on. The real world is always curved. So it's impossible if you're trying to look at the slope of something to just limit yourself to lines. And so now we begin to talk about calculus and you'll see why that comes into play here. Basically, what we want to do is figure out how steep or what the slope of this curve is. But you might ask yourself, how could we possibly find out what the steepness of this curve is when it's constantly changing. Notice the slope of this guy up here at the top is very steep, right? So we say up here at this part of the curve we have sort of like a high slope. But at this part of the curve down at the bottom it's very shallow, we kind of have a low slope down here. Obviously it's changing as you go along the curve. So how do you define the slope of this curve? Well let's say you were interested in uh, this point right here. You have to pick a point on a curve. You can't describe the slope of the whole thing at once because it's constantly changing. But let's say this part at this moment in time is the part we want to know how 
how steep it is. Well, there's, or I should say the slope of it. There's a couple of ways to think about it. The easiest way graphically is you could actually take a couple of points. You could start, you, this is the point you're interested in, but you could pick a point here and you could say, okay, I'm going to draw a line through these two points and it would look something like this. And I can calculate the slope of this line. It's not going to be perfectly exact, but it's going to be sort of kind of close to what the slope is at this point. So I could calculate the slope of this line going here. But if I wanted to get a little bit closer to the true value of the slope at this point, let me choose a different color, then what I could do is I could choose a point a little bit closer. Maybe I pick one here and now I'll draw a line through these two points like that. The green line. So you see I'm getting a little bit closer because I can calculate the slope of this line which is going to be a lot closer to the slope at this point. Now let me pick a different uh, color. Let's pick uh, something like this. Now if I wanted to get really really close I could pick a, a point super duper close and then I could draw it even closer. So you see this line is changing as I go, as I move this point closer and closer and closer, the slope of the line is approaching the slope at exactly the point that I care about. So for the punch line here, let me, instead of cluttering up this graph, let me draw you another one below and let me just kind of redraw everything and that way we're all on the same page. So here's my curve again and again I'm interested let me use my red here. I'm interested at the point basically down here. So the way you do it in calculus is, or I should say graphically, is I could choose a point here, find the slope. Choose a point a little bit closer, find the slope. Choose a point here, find a little slope. Well, eventually, I can get closer and closer and closer and closer. I could choose points closer and closer until I get a line that is exactly what we call tangent to this black curve. It touches that point, but it only goes through that point only by itself. That's what we call tangent. When something is tangent, it means it just kisses the surface of the curve. And the slope of this line is equal to the, what we call the slope of this black curve at this point. And we have a very special name for this concept in Calculus 1, and that is called the derivative. So this is the number one most important concept in all of calculus. And everything you'll possibly ever learn in calculus, you have just learned the fundamental thing about it that sets it apart and makes it important. And that is the derivative of any point along any curve is just equal to the slope of the line that's tangent to that point. In fact, you typically take about half of Calculus 1 to understand what the derivative is and how you calculate it and, and how to do all of the math behind it. But certainly graphically and fundamentally you understand now that the derivative of any point along any curve is just if you take a tangent line to that point and find its slope. That is what we call a derivative. Now for the rest of Calculus 1, or at least a good chunk of it, we basically uh, learn how to do this calculation of the derivative without drawing graphs. But before I get there I want to give you a couple more examples just to show you. What if you had a crazy graph that looks, you know, something like this. And somebody asked you, what is the derivative of this curve at that red point right there. Now it sounds very hard when you don't know anything about calculus because you're like what does a derivative mean? That seems complicated. Well, all you need to do is take a line, draw it exactly tangent to that curve. In other words it just barely kisses that curve at that exact point right there. You find the slope of this line just like you do from Algebra 1 and that slope is equal to the derivative here, right? And same thing over here. If you're interested in this point over here, then you would find the slope of the line just kisses, just tangent to this guy. That would be the derivative of the curve at this point. So when you're calculating the derivative, you're basically finding the slope of the line that just barely kisses that curve at that point. That's what we call being tangent to the curve at that point.